Welcome to our eighth lecture on the course Solar Electric Power Systems. We will talk uh, today about simulation of PV systems and microgrids via the Homer software and also other uh, tools uh, like Metronom. So we will talk about uh, microgrid uh, system sizing, um, about the uh, required data for input, about other tools uh, for system simulation and design. Then I go directly uh, to the introduction of the Homer software and uh, we see some, um, um, some simulations and uh, definitions. Uh, then uh, we do also an uh, exercise. Uh, this is the same as, as exercise number six, but this time calculated with Homer. So this is a typical microgrid system. So we have here our PV system and uh, often we have um, other resources for a backup system or energy storage or sometimes if the resource is sufficient wind turbines. Then we have uh, uh, controls there and we have load. Sometimes the system is grid connected so either to get uh, electricity from the grid or to feed electricity into the grid. So first issue is how to design a microgrid system based on user needs. So the questions to be answered are what kind of renewable energy resources should I use? Do I need storage system? Sometimes, for example, if you have water pumps, uh, you won't need a storage system because you pump water, for example, during daytime and uh, you have usually a tank and you can use that pumped water during the day, also during night time. And uh, how big should the system be? Do I need a backup generator? How will my system meet my growing demand? What if the fuel prices are changing? And many other questions and doubts to be answered. So the consideration in renewable energy sizing is the importance um, of the correct calculations, estimations, require correct and precise data, such as a local wind and um, solar energy potential. We talk a little bit about this and also about the simulations programs for that precise uh, data about uh, the electrical load and the users, importance of components such as PV panels, wind turbines and capacity and size, importance of backup systems, so battery storage or hydrogen tank and the generator, other components such as inverters, charge controllers, MPPTs, that's maximum power point trackers, and last but not least, the system costs and the energy unit costs. A false system, a system design could lead, it could lead to instability, a power outage and a high uh, costs and losses. So first uh, we talk about obtaining the required data. Remember the chapter when we discussed about irradiance, so on. So we have here a pyranometer, we measure it ourselves. If you have a second source such as wind, you should also measure the wind potential. So uh, best is local pyrometers, so you really have uh, the data on site, but you should measure for a long time, at least one year. Same for applies for local anemometers for wind, uh, because some of the potential is changing, you should measure longer than in one year preferably in the vicinity of 10 years. Low temperature sensors because temperature influences performance of the systems. As you, you know from the performance ratio. Local pressure meters, uh, that's important for wind power. If the pressure is changing, also the density of the wind is changing and uh, therefore um, the wind output of a wind turbine is changing. Direction. It's also important uh, which direction uh, is most of the wind is it. Um, how often you have to change the azimuth of the wind turbine. 
official um, local measured data, sometimes you are lucky, is a um, meteorological station close by or um, nearby, um, like the German uh, weather service or uh, many other uh, global weather services. Airports also provide data. Usually uh, they uh, measure uh, height, uh, they, they measure ir irradiance and uh, wind speed at a certain height and uh, irradiance only measured horizontally. can use a satellite data like the MERA program with NASA data and uh, with ground station the collection uh, is for example Meteonorm which is very often used uh, for professional system uh, installers a system designer or PDGIS. Um, PDGIS is for free supplied by the European Union. Um, let's first talk about uh, satellite data so we talk about um, the uh, available parameters in such a program, for example, here the MIRA2 um, uh, software. So we have there a long and short wave irradiance. Uh, we have also albedo information. Actually, what the uh, satellite sees is often only the albedo. So we have the ground reflection uh, incorporated, uh, cloud, uh, cloud traction. So how much is uh, how much is, is the cloud cover? Um, and uh, temperature at different heights, uh, the air pressure, uh, wind speed and wind direction at different heights. Because usually if you measure wind speed it's usually in a, in an, um, a height of 10 meters but modern wind turbines they go above 100 meters. So this uh, data usually by satellites are available for the whole world and uh, they have different accuracy, so you should check that, so what accuracy you need. And uh, first let's talk about the MERA2 data or uh, the ERA5 data and the PVGIS. So uh, MERA2 offers a resolution of 50 kilometers in a, lat a latitudal direction. So that's equivalent to 0 0.5 degrees in latitude and uh, 0 0.625 degrees in longitude. Uh, on, uh, on the height of Paderborn, available since uh, 1980. This you saw already is such a map obtained uh, by um, Amira. The, the, the square, what you see here, is uh, the resolution for such a, as you see, is the distance is quite high. So here on the left uh, mid middle part, uh, you have Paderborn, Bad Lipspringe, and uh, this is all treated as uh, one single uh, pixel in, the, the, in terms of uh, uh, data. Uh, for the abbreviations, MERA2 means the Modern Area Retrospective Analysis for Research and Application, version 2, and ECMWF is the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts. ERA is um, has a bit higher resolution, it offers a resolution by, by 30 by 30 kilometers, and data is available since 2010. And uh, sure, it serves to design an energy system based on the local data of energy potential. So let's see uh, here the Meteonorm software, how this works. So irradiance measurement data. Let's In this video, I will show you how to estimate solar irradiation using Meteonorm software. First, go to Meteonorm website. Click on download button and install the software. Open the software after installation. If you don't have a license continue in demo mode. First step is to select a particular location. You can either search for the location, or use the map tool to find it. We will use the map and key in latitude of 15 degrees and longitude of 45 degrees. Then click on create new location button. Give a name to the new location. We will name it location 1. Then click save button. Close the map tool window. You can find the location in user defined tab. Click on select location for calculation. Then click next button. In this section you can specify the orientation and tilt angle you require. 
we will change tilt angle to 15 degrees, then click next. Here, you can modify some data settings. We will keep the default settings and proceed to next section. In this section, you can specify output format. Let's keep standard format. Final section shows the results of calculations. There are several tabs you can explore. Monthly diffuse and global irradiation on horizontal surface in kilowatt hours per meter square per month. A trend of daily irradiation throughout the whole year. Temperature profile of the location. Precipitation. And sunshine duration in hours for each month. And most importantly, a table of monthly and annual values for several parameters including global horizontal irradiation and global tilted irradiation at the specified tilt angle, in this case 15 degrees. You can copy the table, then paste it in Excel spreadsheet. Then you can convert the monthly irradiation on inclined surface into average daily irradiation by dividing by number of days in each month. You can also find daily irradiation averaged throughout the year. You can save all the results to a text file by clicking on Save All Results to Disk, then choosing the output format. However, in demo mode this function is not available. So this has been a presentation, a um, short introduction on a meteorome for estimating the solar irradiance. You plan a PV power plant, it's very often used. This is now a um, short video about a PV GIS. As I told you, uh, it's by the European Union, it's for free. In this video I will show you how to estimate solar irradiation using PVGIS database. First, go to PVGIS website and click either Europe or Africa for Africa and Asia. We will choose Africa and Asia. You can either search for a location or key in latitude and longitude. We will key in a location in Middle East with 15 degree latitude and 45 longitude. In PV Estimation tab, you can assess the performance of grid-connected system. You can specify system losses, tilt angle, orientation, and choose tracking options. In Monthly Radiation tab, you can get estimated monthly solar irradiation. Similarly, you can get daily irradiation from Daily Radiation tab. In Standalone PV tab, you can design a standalone PV system. Let's estimate monthly average irradiation for our location. We will estimate horizontal irradiation and irradiation at optimal angle. You can also estimate irradiation at any specific tilt angle if you want. This window show us the results. We can see optimal tilt angle for this location, which is 17 degrees from horizontal. We can see average horizontal irradiation per day for each month, and irradiation at optimal tilt angle, as well as the respective monthly optimal tilt angle. There is also annually average daily irradiance estimates at horizontal and at optimal tilt angle. Here is also a graph to visualize horizontal irradiation and irradiation at optimal tilt angle of 17 degrees. Another graph shows how optimal tilt angle changes throughout the year. You can also save the results into a test file or PDF.
So there's a uh, different software. I just uh, finished here with the solar radiation uh, uh, software uh, with this uh, two uh, examples, uh, but uh, uh, for system sizing, there are also different uh, softwares. Uh, in general, they have uh, these uh, typical input requirements. So you have the loads uh, that had to, had to be supplied, um, some to plan a load profile, um, daily or hourly profile even, uh, weekly profile, monthly profile, or a seasonal profile, for example, for agriculture, or a yearly profile. The geographical location of installation, latitude and longitude, the desired types of power sources, so wind, solar, generator, and grid, and so on, can also make a different modifications on that. First, you start with a simulation without wind, for example, just do solar with or without um, uh, with, uh, with storage or with it about without a uh, generator and so on, and uh, see whether they are feasible and uh, uh, do a cost comparison. The desired types of storage, so battery storage for smaller systems, um, electrolyzer and hydrogen storage for large scale systems, or if you have possibility, you can use a pumped hydro storage. We discuss this in the chapter storage a bit later. Also other components, uh, just like converters and controllers, and uh, very important, the financial side conditions. So depending um, when you purchase equipment locally, uh, what currency, what infl inflation rate has this currency, uh, most important, the interest rate uh, there if you have to borrow money, and uh, whether subsidies, um, how much is the risk, uh, if you, for example, need insurance and so on, and your finance also do a risk calculation, and they want to know how much is the risk on the local side. Um, the cost of capacity shorted, so are there any uh, penalties or uh, is it less critical? How much is the lifetime expectations uh, of the systems? Is it 20 years? Uh, what's the usual warranty of PV modules? Uh, or 25 years or latest PV modules with a double glass uh, setup? They have even a lifetime expectation and a warranty of th uh, 30 years. Battery are usually much less. Some say uh, the warranty is only uh, two years. Uh, this depends on the brand and the local conditions, especially temperature in, in case of batteries. Also, uh, emission trading is uh, playing an increasing role. So if you substitute a diesel generator plant, uh, you uh, have a trade-off in uh, CO2 and uh, you can get paid for this. This depends also, there are several uh, companies, what the risks are that your system is working, not working. and. Uh, this defines the price for your avoided uh, carbon dioxide emissions. Typical uh, results as output are, so the rated uh, capacity of a PV system, same uh, for a wind turbine, the total annual electrical energy production, the renewable uh, penetration in uh, percent, uh, and the related uh, CO2. Sure, if you have uh, just uh, wind and solar, you have 100%, but you, if you need a backup system, uh, that's less than 100% usually. Converter and inverter are power output, so this is very good to design or to, uh, to dimension uh, sizing uh, the inverter and inverters. The battery system, we did it already manually. Storage capacity, um, but more in detail, the number in series and parallel, the bus voltage, the hours and days of autonomy. So we did it uh, very uh, with the rule of thumb. So we used uh, days of autonomy for two days in the tropics and four days in lo uh, locations like Central Europe. The system costs annualized, final cost of energy, the net uh, present costs. This is a COE, this is a cost of energy, average cost per kilowatt hour of useful produced energy. Um, the component costs, uh, capital, replacement, maintenance costs, and the so-called NPC, net cost. This is a present value of costs of all system components minus the present value of revenues over the project's lifetime. 
you see um, the PV saw, um, it's from the same designer as uh, the software um, PSOL, which uh, I presented uh, on the thermal, solar thermal energy section. Take a look at it. Oh, there is no sound. So just uh, this uh, includes also uh, shading. So uh, here uh, you start uh, usually uh, with your project, either you have ready one begun or you start a new one. And you have also some pre-designed project, uh, so you don't have to design everything from the scratch. So in this tutorial it's explained how to start a new project. always back and forward uh, if you are not sure about a certain issue and uh, uh, to look up something or redesign something you can also add some pictures to the project so it's easily uh, more discoverable and here's a logo here of uh, Valentin software next page so this is not too much necessary so here you see an out uh, um, layout of the system PV modules inverter meter and this is a grid connected system simple PV grid connected system and here we choose the location to get the irradiance so this is for Berlin uh, you can also import data from Meteor Norm or own measured data also. Then you have the grid here, so it asks for the grid. Obviously it's a, 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 a single phase grid here and you can do either a 2D or 3D simulation here. So this time it's use a 3D simulation. already uh, pre-designed it is a building uh, the simple roof or you can also choose a more complex roof uh, or even a wall or facade or open area this time this open area is choosed chosen you get a nice visualization Rain view. This is an initial part of your area. Here you choose you can also add houses, either this uh, solar, um, not solar, or trees. The software even includes the growth of trees, so you, if you have the type of trees, it even uh, includes the growth and uh, therefore uh, the shadowing in the future. This is a top down view. perspective around with us. You can download the uh, version for free uh, with uh, I think one month validity and uh, limited number of locations. I think uh, location is limited to Berlin. If you define the size of area here is 90 by 50 meters, 50 by 50 meters here and the orientation
gives us the upper east south orientation and so on it's also a compass here to see the orientation so we plant up tree here you see it's causing shadows so you can enter the type of tree the size of trees the height of trees different kinds of modal mounting systems usually several rows of uh, PD modules so you have a big data bank of uh, PD modules you can choose from so this takes a default one a polycrystalline 200 watt module a number of vertical modules the module spacing in the one so this requires some time really to do that properly um, but if you have a really large system, it's uh, a quite um, expensive investment. So it's uh, important to do that quite accurately. To find out the final, to have the fill area and so on. Um, as we learned on the irradiance chapter, uh, that if you close, uh, put the rows too close to each other, they shadow each, each other. So the obstacles uh, don't have to be by trees or by um, uh, uh, or houses and so on or uh, they can even um, occur on their own just by, um, by additional rows of PD modules we added some modules here so this is 350 modules 70 kilowatt under standard test conditions. So you can cover the whole space. So now you have a problem here because here are some essential shading. So you modify the number of rows and so on. Here you have a data bank with all the different inverters. So check in the according input values in terms of voltage, maximum current, and so on, as we did already when we designed manually system. So you have uh, all the different uh, configurations. Um, they calculate the feasibility, the green is good, and uh, here you see some red part, that means there is significant shadowing and losses and so on, so this uh, can be all uh, calculated. So this is the option to use uh, two inverters with, uh, uh, or two, uh, an inverter with two maximum power point trackers to take care of the shaded modules. shading simulation then you see many modules are affected so it gives a circuit design here the modules how many uh, uh, strings and here you see they're connected in series even uh, print out a plan for the local uh, electrician to install it and so on print it out in different sizes or make a PDF out of it here you have a list about the components then you go to the finance analysis so here 
here uh, you can uh, feed in tariff quite easy because it's fixed and you get the same tariff for the whole lifetime if you're on different countries you have different feed-in tariffs and uh, the program takes care of that this is the output this is a different month here the generation of electricity and the income compare different options this is a financial payback uh, time here see here also you can make a pdf or a word system uh, um, that can convert it directly here. Here's an example of, um, of a more complicated project um, and uh, where you are not on site, just the data are taken from Google Maps only. So Google, um, Google Earth, let's see here. Let's see. port and then you see the extrusion into 3d objects here you have a certain address this object is 2d but then you want to make 3d out of it so you have to get some information about the height and so on that's already because it's 3d the google earth 3d so you have the information about but you have to size it properly with the ruler no to calibrate the length so you want to know how much that is so this is 23.9 liters this data from google earth has then to be brought to pdl some obstacles here this uh, power from air conditioning or from elevator and we call shadows uh, and uh, these have to be considered and therefore we have to know the heights of them too save now and now we put that Im image into the TV soul back in the welcome page of TV soul as you saw before so 
have to do enter the location once again. Four, we have three D simulation. Load the saved image. So we have to put the right sizes here. Uh, measured it already in Google Earth, but uh, this um, the measures have to be. TV soul. Here you measured 19.7 meters, so you put this also here. So you calibrated the size of your object. So redesign the objects. Because it was not a vector graphics, it was just a bitmap graphics, so you have to uh, resketch it. So at the end, it looks like this blue area now is a, just a vector graphics, and this can be used uh, for TV soul. This is 2D representation. Now we want to make a 3D representation out of it. So we have to know the heights of the different ob the object itself uh, and the obstacles on the roof. We measure that height from Google Earth. We enter it over here once again. There's an automatic method to assign the module, so you don't have to design a lot of, uh, um, to try and retry a lot of options. Uh, it can automatically choose best design. Lowest losses and so on, considering the financial parameter. Here, the obstacle here. So you have to also sketch it, make a vector graphic out of it, and also put some height to it. So the height is here, 290. So you see it looks like that. I'm sure it would be much better if there would be a direct interface from uh, Google Earth directly to uh, PSOL, but not the case, so therefore you have to spent half an hour or so to uh, do that. optimal coverage of the roof here can be carried out with the according elevation angle and azimuth angle of the module. Now we have shade analysis. 
for one day only, or for the whole year. So here you see uh, the green uh, part, no shadowing, and the uh, yellow part that is shadowed sometimes and you have some losses. Um, there's also a forum. If there's a question, we can answer that. I told you there's a free version of it, then you can try that out. This now P Syst. Uh, usually people say so uh, for buildings and so on, PV Sol is the best. Uh, but if you make a multi megawatt system, usually system designer is the software uh, PV Syst. It comes from Switzerland. Uh, here's also a starting tutorial. Hi. Welcome to another PV Syst tutorial. Today we are going to look at the installation, configuration, and first run of PV Syst. To download an evaluation of PVSYST, you may go to pvsyst.com and your web browser. I am using Google Chrome. Open pvsyst.com in the browser. You can have a look at the website and read some basic info on the software. To download PVSYST, click the Download PVSYST link. This will take you to the download page. In the download page, you will find all details regarding the software and the system requirements. Here you can see the different versions available for you to use. When we download PV Syst for the first time, we will get a 30-day valuation version. It has all the features but the result generated after the simulation will have watermark on it, indicating the report is generated using the trial version. After 30 days the software will change into trial version, where the functionality is limited. It is still good for learning, but not for real-world problem solving. This piece of software required to have a Windows machine with version Windows Vista or above. It required .NET Framework 4.5 installed. I do not recommend using a Windows XP. PV Syst will not function properly in Windows XP. Please make sure your computer have all necessary hardware and software installed. Click on the Download PV Syst link to start download. As you can see the software starts downloading. The download has been finished and we can launch the installer. The installation is straightforward. Click next on the welcome screen. Read through the license text if you prefer. Agree to the license by ticking the checkbox. Click next to continue. Here you can change the installation directory if you like. Click change and choose a location if you want. I prefer the default installation location. Click next to continue. Click install to start the installation. The installation will start. This will take around a minute to complete. The installation is now complete. Click finish to exit the setup. To launch PVSYS double click the desktop shortcut. You can check the license status here from the license menu. If you choose to buy an activate your product you can use this window. Here you can choose your language. The interface has four main options to choose from, primary design, project design, databases, and tools. I will talk more about the interface and these options on the coming tutorials. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Like and subscribe for updates and news. So this is very basic uh, uh, initiation of PV Syst. Uh, you can go to the PV Syst web website and uh, there are much uh, more tutorials on that. Uh, as told, there is a free license uh, for I think 30 days and uh, you can uh, test it and uh, this will be also part of the exercise. So you use the example of exercise 6 and uh, calculate it uh, via PV Syst.
Now we come um, uh, to a more complex program, the Homer. So uh, we don't have only photovoltaics, uh, we have uh, different sources of energy, uh, such as wind, uh, battery backup and so on. Uh, and the newer versions of PV Sol and uh, PV Sist also backup is available, but uh, this uh, came only some years ago, uh, while uh, Homer was initially already designed uh, for multi uh, source and uh, multi uh, um, and storage and so on. Hi, I'm Lisa McDonald and today I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on how to use the Homer software program that can be accessed through the Department of Energy's website. And this Homer software is a great tool to use to analyze different renewable energy systems uh, that are the most optimal and energy efficient for your business or home. So to get started, look up here at the top left corner of your screen and you can see equipment to consider. I've already started a project on wind turbines, but if you hit this add or remove button, you can uh, add or remove any type of system you're uh, interested in looking at, whether it's solar panels, hydropower, etc. You can add multiple generators and uh, multiple batteries to your desire. Uh, you're also going to want to consider whether or not you're going to connect your system to the grid um, or have it as a standalone. If you want to change any of the specs on your generator, your converter, or your battery, you just click each of their little icon buttons. Um, and all of these screens look the same. So I'm looking at a quantity of one generator. An example of a capital cost of $1,500, replacement cost of $1,200, and your operating and maintenance cost. Uh, this one's five cents an hour, but it can be per uh, per hour per day, etc. Hit OK. Next, you're going to look at your resources. Since I'm only looking at a, tur a wind turbine, I only have wind resource data here. I've already uploaded a uh, time series data file into the Homer software program. You can manually input all of this data here, however it's pretty time consuming so I'd highly recommend uh, having a data file ready to go so the software can analyze that pretty quickly. Uh, your fuel source, this one's going to be on diesel, however you can change that, especially if you're looking at a, a solar PV system, if you want to run on natural gas or biofuel, etc. Economics, if you click that button, you can analyze different uh, interest rates and lifetimes of loans. Hit OK. If there was anything that wasn't syncing properly uh, with the equipment I've considered up above and the uh, time series data that I've already input. Homer would give me an error in this section here where it says document author notes. If I clicked the little eyeglass button it would give me a little more description on what that error is and how I can fix that. So right now I'm going to hit calculate. So it's going to calculate the most uh, energy efficient and optimal renewable energy system that I'm looking at here. These are the two most uh, optimal for my project and these buttons here uh, show you indicate what's included in your system of course the most optimal system here is does not include a wind turbine um, however that's because the initial capital cost is so much lower I'm prepared to spend that initial capital though because I'm really interested in putting in a wind turbine so if I look at this system here shows me that my operating costs are actually a little bit lower at 21000 um, for a year which is offset by that renewable energy that I'm producing. My total net present cost of the system is going to be about $337,630. Um, my cost of energy is going to be roughly $0.85 cents a kilowatt hour. If I double click this here it actually goes into quite a bit more detail on all the different specs on um, this project that I'm running. So you can see I have uh, one 10 kilowatt wind turbine. I've got a 15 kilowatt generator, size 8 Trojan L16P battery, and a 6 kilowatt inverter. Here's a breakdown of some of the costs, net present costs, cost of energy, and my operating costs. Um, you can look at the different uh, cash flows here, get some great uh, examples of bar graphs, etc. Um, another thing I'm really interested in is the um, electrical output. 
So this is showing that the wind turbine is going to produce about 8,337 kilowatt hours a year. Um, and it's going to also have an elect excess electricity amount of 18.4%. Um, and then you can just, you know, go through all these different tabs, uh, have some great graphs that you can use in your presentations. Um, and I think this is a really great software program to use to analyze different systems and find the one that's most efficient for you. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for visiting. Here you see that's quite interesting, the graph. So you see the different months, and uh, this is the hour of the day. And uh, here you see uh, the usage or the uh, uh, power uh, available there or consumed there. So uh, the black one is almost zero, and the highest one here is in red. And uh, so you see here uh, these, uh, this representation of that. So this is just as a y-axis. Uh, the uh, hours of the day so midday is here in the middle and uh, so obviously it's here in the morning and the evening uh, there is uh, a higher power uh, and uh, here um, in uh, november december uh, during the year uh, there is uh, less power available This video are also available on YouTube with all the further videos. You see the links below. So uh, this is a originally a Canadian company which designed the Homer Pro software. Um, as uh, it was originally designed, I think, by the Canadian Department of Energy and uh, became a commercial company later on. You can also get a trial version. Um, the www homerenergy.com and um, you can use it uh, for village power, island uh, utilities, uh, to grid connected uh, campuses or even military bases, contains uh, generator, PV, wind turbines, uh, biomass, storage, converters, boilers, hydrokinetic, uh, uh, grid fuel cells, electric and terminal loads and so on. Uh, it uses uh, the irradiance data from uh, NASA and uh, even import local data. Uh, for example, if you carried out measurements, um, they are usually better at uh, satellite measurements. And uh, you have some predefined load profiles, uh, for example, residential, uh, commercial, industrial, but for sure you can also enter your own measurements of uh, uh, the load profiles. Here you see the interface uh, of the Homo software, so the locations and so on. And uh, here you have the financial uh, side parameters, the discount rate, inflation rate, um, the allowed um, and capacity shortages. So this might quite differ if you uh, have a hospital, for example, uh, all your equipment has to work 100%. So there couldn't be any shortage, so 0% of shortages. If it's just, for example, a water pump and so on, and uh, uh, you can uh, um, allow some shortages, which makes the uh, system considerably cheaper. And you can enter here also project lifetime. Uh, at the load, the power sources, and the real energy source, and so on. It's the same uh, as, as I saw in the video. You have the uh, site. Um, you have uh, the load profile, which you can enter. Uh, you can also enter the resource information, give their wind and solar and so on. If you're going to opt for solar only, for example, or a diesel generator in conjunction, um, the component characteristics and costs uh, calculated the results. Usually the database is not as extensive as a PV syst or a PV sol for the uh, kind of solar modules and inverters and so on. Uh, there is some database, uh, but probably you have to uh, enter uh, the properties on your own. Then you calculate the results and uh, you can also optimize system in terms of costs and examine the results. And um, this is also a complete video uh, to it. So here you have some uh, different options. So here first, for example, first example is solar and wind um, 
and uh, storage and so on, uh, and a grid connection. Um, so here this, uh, uh, and here you see just this is just uh, a grid connected system, so solar and grid, uh, and the uh, design, the system size is uh, 1451 uh, kilowatt and so on. So we can have different um, sizes. This is uh, the amount of money. So this is a million here, quite uh, expensive uh, system, the operating costs and so on. And uh, here you can have different options and see uh, the, um, uh, the, the financial outcome of that. Here also the limitations. So grid is no limitation. So it's put to 9999.999. So it should be represented for unlimited and so on. Dispatch um, also uh, not and so you can enter such site conditions also. Yes, as I mentioned, inflation rate, uh, annual capacity sorted. So yearly permitted amount of power outage, load profile I mentioned already. And uh, here, for example, you have a measured load profile, and this is only distribution of load profile. Um, and uh, it's put into Homer, and uh, so you have here a really uh, um, uh, the, the amplitude and uh, the seasonal changes of uh, an uh, industry, uh, of an industry load. Here you see some typical uh, variations. So so you have here uh, the day and the different month. So in January, you have the highest load uh, in the evening. Um, um, and in February, it looks very similar, a little bit decreased. And uh, the list profile here uh, you have in June, uh, you still have the peak in the evening, uh, but uh, it's almost the same height as the midday peak. Typical parameters uh, for simulations such as Homer, so you have, for example, if you use a wind turbines, uh, you should uh, know the hub height. Uh, so that's the height um, of the horizontal axis so from here to the ground. That's the hub height. Um, the round trip efficiency of the battery. Uh, we applied this already in exercise six. State of charge. We more discussed about uh, the um, depth of discharge. So this is just the other way around. So you just describe the state of charge. Um, so the charge remaining in the battery and uh, the grid to sell back price. So how much money you get from the grid operator. So it's kind of premium tariff you get for uh, your, your energy from the grid operator. So uh, here the wind resource. So for example, this is our monthly average wind speeds in meters per seconds. So, for example, we measured it on the own here in Paderborn, and we can enter that in uh, Homer Pro. Uh, and this is a, a wind speed. So, um, apparently, we have the highest wind speed in Paderborn uh, with an average of seven meters per second. Um, you should be a bit careful with uh, average wind speeds uh, because uh, the power of the wind is increasing uh, with a uh, potency of uh, with a cubic uh, um, uh, of the wind speed. So at double the wind speed, uh, you have eight times the power of the wind speed. So uh, depending on the distribution, uh, this uh, the average wind speed uh, can be same, but you will have a different energy output on the system. So this is a solar uh, simulation. If you see here, uh, we don't have any problems during the summer months, uh, but the problem solar energy in Central Europe are the winter months. This is a GHI, uh, this is a global horizontal irradiance. If you incline uh, a, bit, uh, a bit, this is a bit more equilibrated, so we'll have a little bit less irradiant summer, uh, but more in uh, winter. We did this in the irradiance chapter already, so you should know really. Um, also, uh, we have um, PV a deteriorating factor. So this is a factor to compensate losses uh, of PV towards end of lifetime. So degradation is sometimes called. For example, uh, the final performance is only 80% of the initial performance. It's usually the definition of the lifetime. So if a manufacturer says uh, he takes a warranty of um, 20 years, it's usually the case if uh, the 
performance is below 80% of the initial performance. If it's 81%, it's still not a warranty case. Uh, if it's 79%, it's a warranty case and the lifetime is finished. Ground of lectums albedo, you notice know already, um, this is DHI mentioned already, uh, this is a global horizontal irradiance in kilowatt hour per square meter um, per year or kilowatt hours per square meter per day. And uh, then you have the solar direct and normal irradiance. Uh, where we don't use any concentrators here and so on. This direct irradiance is at the moment less relevant. If we use tracking systems or concentrating systems uh, with lens or uh, mirrors, uh, that uh, becomes more important. So this is DHA for Paderborn. Uh, you see here just the general um, seasonal change, but also uh, depending on the weather conditions uh, you have uh, quite high changes between different days. This is a capacity shortage penalty. Uh, usually you pay a shortage. If you each uh, kilowatt hour you don't deliver, uh, you have to pay a fee. Renewable fraction, uh, fraction of a renewable production in the simulation. Emission penalties. Um, so um, this will be introduced next year in Germany. I think starting with 25 and 30 euros per ton of carbon dioxide and will increase to 55 euros within the next years. Sensitivity analysis is rather interesting. Uh, you can uh, variate a specific parameter, for example, inclination of a PV module or size of the battery and so on, and see the influence on the system output, both technically and financially. We have some references so here for the metronome. Um, okay, this is website of metronome. There's a lot of also tutorial descriptions, uh, also the mathematical uh, model, which is uh, behind that. I won't go into details uh, here. That also same applies for the mirror uh, system and the PV GIS system. Um, um, the commercial software for the system design, sometimes they don't provide um, all details of the software. Uh, because um, they protect it uh, somehow, but uh, here for PV systems, so you find some useful information. There are also tools there uh, which go more into details uh, in, in a system analysis. Here you have the website of Doma Energy. So this was uh, the lecture uh, to d for today. So we come to the exercise. Uh, to prepare the size, you should download the Homo Pro and um, simulate the already manually solved exercise via Homer. Uh, the website is here. So just uh, as a reminder, so this was a household in Rio de Janeiro uh, with a um, daily irradiance of the first month um, uh, of four kilowatt hours per square meter per day. Um, and uh, we had the energy needs as a load profile, what we find here. So one ventilator with 60 watts, which operates from 9.30 until 11 p.m. Five lights uh, of 60 watts, uh, each operating from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, we substitute these lights uh, as an energy saving measure by LEDs. Come to this a bit later. We did it also in exercise number six. Notebook computer of 30 watts from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. A TV set from 8 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. And uh, we just substitute the light by LED light bulbs. And uh, then we should calculate uh, the battery size um, uh, for 24 volt systems uh, with the given system efficiency. Our round trip efficiency is 0 0.8. Uh, the efficiency of the charge controller is 0 0.95 and the inverter efficiency is 0 0.9. We take a constant, but as you know, uh, the uh, inverter profile uh, uh, can also change with the load, but here we take a constant efficiency of 0 0.9. Then we calculate uh, the uh, panel size and so on uh, with a uh, consumption efficiency of 0 0.1. The costs, um, if they have costs uh, in Brazil, uh, they are quite high duties for importation of PV modules. So this is uh, quite expensive in the vicinity of one euro per watt peak. Lifetime uh, is 25 years. A battery uh, 300 euro uh, per kilowatt hour um, lifetime due to the high tropical uh, temperature four years only. And uh, the cost for the mounting and support structure is 0.5 uh, euro per watt peak. 
Uh, this number you can also take from uh, the four kilowatt hours per square meter. This uh, can you also calculate uh, by um, by Homer and see uh, um, how much uh, the results um, divert the manually calculated system uh, from the Homer calculated system. As I mentioned already, uh, we should substitute uh, the lamp uh, by eight watt uh, lamps. So instead of 1,200 uh, watt hours daily consumption, uh, we would have 160 watt hours of daily consumption only. Good luck.